This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University, and today I wanted to talk a bit more about using the Lightning Network with the Phoenix Wallet. This is part two. Be sure to watch part one, especially if you don't already understand how the Lightning Network works and how payment channels work and the importance of inbound liquidity. So this is the wallet. It's the Phoenix Wallet. It's available both for Android and for iOS. It's a free and open source product. It's a mobile wallet for your phone. And most importantly, it's non-custodial or self-custodial. Someone else is not holding your funds. Now, as we covered in yesterday's video in part one, in order to use the Lightning Network in a self-custodial manner where you own your own coins and control your own coins, you need to be running a Lightning node. You need to be doing channel management, especially managing inbound liquidity. And neither of these things are easy to do. But fortunately, Phoenix Wallet is a huge improvement and can help take care of both of these things for you. The Phoenix Wallet is put out by Async, which is one of the major Lightning companies. And they also say that they have the largest node on the Lightning Network, which bodes well for liquidity for the Phoenix Wallet. They're also what's called a Lightning Service Provider. You may have heard this term LSP. It's modeled on ISP, Internet Service Provider. What this is, is a company that for a small fee will open up a payment channel with you, provide you with inbound liquidity, on their side of the payment channel. And as we discussed in yesterday's video in part one, this is very important because if, for example, you were this side of the payment channel and you were receiving money through your payment channel into your side of the payment channel, you can only receive as much as is on the other side of your partners, uh, the other side of the payment channel. And so what a Lightning service provider can do is add to this what's called inbound liquidity. Another way of thinking about this is like a one row abacus but this is what a payment channel looks like on the lightning network if you're finding this video helpful so far I just ask you to subscribe like comment and share that's a way you can really help out the channel lightning service providers can also swap bitcoin between on-chain layer one and the lightning network which is a layer two if necessary they can move bitcoin from on-chain into a payment channel on the lightning network they can also take it out of your payment channel on the lightning network and provide it to you on-chain in a bitcoin address so you can go ahead and you can download this from your uh, from the google play store or from the app store i would encourage you to read the faq the frequently asked questions before using it it's not a very long section but it will give you a nice review of many of the things that we're going to talk about here the most important thing though is not to share your seed your wallet will be backed up with a 12 word seed 12 english words in a certain order and if you share this one any with anyone else they can take your bitcoin so be sure not to do that you can also check out the fee section which we'll be talking a little bit about sending via lightning using the phoenix wallet there's a fee that's charged by phoenix point four percent so four tenths of a percentage point plus four sats receiving via lightning there are no fees sending on chain you just pay the transaction fee to the miner and you can choose how much you're willing to pay and if it's a high fee environment you can choose not to use on chain also receiving on chain you pay the mining fees for the bitcoin miner who mines that block as well as a thousand sat one-time payment to phoenix and then you could also request inbound liquidity which i hope we'll have time to talk about in this video just a reminder for lightning in general, these are some activities that require an on-chain transaction fee, a, tr a transaction fee on the base layer, opening a payment channel, closing a payment channel. These are both two of two multi-sig transactions that take place on Bitcoin's base layer on the blockchain itself. Adding funds to a payment channel, this is called splicing in, removing funds from a payment channel, splicing out. And so the Lightning Network is not immune to high on-chain transaction fees, but it's a very clever way of batching up lots of transactions and then settling the net result of those transactions on-chain at a later point in time if necessary. So you can build up a lot of sats in your payment channel and then you can you can swap those out to on-chain at some point if you want. And you can close the channel or you can splice out. There are various ways of doing this. But it's, it's important to understand that this is how money always scales. It's scaled this way under the gold standard. It's scaled this way under the fiat standard. And under the Bitcoin standard, it also doesn't make sense to do everything at the base layer, which is just a very important settlement layer. And so a lot of economic activity will take place in higher layers and then get batched up and settled on the base layer itself so let's turn now to the phoenix wallet you can download it open it up and then you'll be greeted with this introductory screen welcome with phoenix sending and receiving bitcoins is easy and safe 
Bitcoin supercharged. Phoenix uses payment channels to make Bitcoin fast and private. Your key, your Bitcoins, Phoenix is self-custodial. You take control. You can restore your wallet at any time using your secret key. Keep it safe. So then we'll click get started. We are going to create a new wallet. If you have lost your wallet for some reason, you dropped your phone in the toilet or something, you can re-download the app and restore your wallet using that restore my wallet button and you'll just enter your 12 words there that you used when you originally backed up your phoenix wallet and you'll have it reconstituted on your phone but what we're going to do is we're going to create a new wallet and here we are at the main home screen we can click on the lightning icon and that will tell us whether we're connected to anything we're connected to the internet we're connected to a lightning peer we're connected to an electrum server there's uh, the wrench will give you allow you to uh, contact support read the faq do currency conversion. This uh, this button here will give you the list, the historical list of payments that you've made. And now we're also gonna go into the settings button. The most important thing to do is first go to the recovery phase phrase and it will show you your seed, your 12 words, and be sure to write that down on a piece of paper and store it in a safe place, maybe make multiple copies. If anyone has these 12 words, they can reconstitute your Phoenix wallet and take your funds. So it's important to say that you've uh, you've done this so we can click both of these buttons and then there's also the option to back this up to the iCloud I would uh, probably not do this it, it may or may not matter depending on how much funds you're holding in this wallet but as part of this you agree that you understand that certain Apple employees may be able to access your iCloud data and you understand that Apple may share your iCloud data with government agencies agencies upon request so you probably don't want to do that if you value your privacy but the most important thing from this screen is to write down your 12 words and so you have a backup you can go through and see the various parts here i will encourage you first to take a look at uh, channel management this will tell you the maximum amount that you're willing to pay and you can you can change this when you need to do it on chain a base layer transaction and so you want to make sure automated channel management is turned on. That's probably the best way to use this. And then it'll give you an estimate at the bottom what transaction fees currently are on Bitcoin, and they can move around quite a bit. Fees are currently est estimated around 91.84 sats, about $3.66. And you're going to need to pay this fee when you open up an initial channel when you set up your wallet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this a little bit higher. I'm going to say I'm willing to pay 11,000 sats in order to do this. That's about $4.38. So this is definitely something you want to do at a time when transaction fees are lower and the mempool is less full. If you go under advanced options here, you can also decide what percentage fees you're willing to pay relative to the incoming payment amount. Obviously paying a 50% fee is quite large. You may want to move that down. So for example, if they give an example here, example payment, you're receiving 8,000 sats. The max absolute would be 11,000 sats, which I set up here. The max percentage would be 4,000 sats that you'd be willing to pay in an online uh, on-chain transaction fee. So you may want to adjust this downwards to 1% or 5% or 10%. You can, you can play around with these settings as well. So now I'm going to get out of this settings thing and we're going to re actually receive some Bitcoin into this wallet so you see how that works. So the first thing we're going to do is click on receive and we're go going to copy this uh, lightning invoice and there is a warning fee expected a fee of 9,184 sats may be needed to receive this payment this is when we're initially funding the wallet and what we're going to do here is we're actually going to be opening up a channel with async with phoenix and it's going to be opening up a channel with its own node and connecting that node to the mobile node that is running on this iphone so i'm going to copy this receive address and then i'm going to go to my strike wallet and I'm going to send some Bitcoin over using Lightning. So I'll click send, send with the uh, QR code, and then I'm going to paste from my clipboard. And I'm going to send over, uh, just to make it interesting, let's send over 100,000 sats. That's about $40 currently. We'll click next. So I'll be sending this to myself in my Phoenix wallet. I'll get 100,000 sats. The routing fee is just 12 sats, a tiny fraction of a penny. So a total of 100,012 sats will be debited from my strike wallet. I'll click confirm and it has now been sent. So what I can do now is I can go back over to the Phoenix wallet and we can see that 
I did not receive 100,000 sats as Strike said I was going to do, but Strike didn't know that Phoenix needed to open up a payment channel with me. So they charged me, these are the fees that were charged to me by Phoenix. They charged me 1,000 sats in order to receive this payment. A new payment channel was opened. So that's just an initial fee to open the payment channel. And then the minor fees for this were 5,000. 328 sats. So it was a little bit less than I was expected. I was willing to pay 9,000 to 11,000 sats roughly. You can click into details if you want to see more uh, details about this transaction. So now I'm back on the home screen and we can see I've received 93,672 sats. I forgot to mention you can also change the currency that's displayed here. You can display it in Bitcoin or sats. There's 100 million sats in, in a single Bitcoin. You can also change the fiat currency. I'm using US dollars here. And so you can toggle between that. You can also toggle between the US dollar amount, so $37.41, and you can also black it out if you don't want to see, if you're doing a demo, for example, you don't want to show people how much money you have in your wallet. What I did actually for the purposes of this video, I deleted my Phoenix wallet after backing up the 12 word seed. This is going to be the wallet I use for this demo. And then I'll reinstall the wallet that I regularly use. So I have 93,672 sats in here. Take, let's take a look at what our payment channel actually looks like. If we go down here under advanced, now that we've set up a payment channel, it will be visible since we've sent some, some sats in. We'll click on payment channels and we can see on the left here, this is the payment channel. On the left is the money that I control. On the right is the lightning, the uh, Phoenix async side of things. So I currently have 93,672 sats and there's some liquidity left on the other side of the channel. There's only 8,000, uh, approximately 8,000 sats. And some of those will be reserved for just the way that the Lightning Network works. So in practice at this point, I can only receive less, probably quite a bit less than 8,000 sats. So what is a way to add liquidity to this channel? I'm gonna show you a way of doing that. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back and we're gonna generate another receive address we're going to copy this. We'll go back to strike. This time we're going to send, uh, we'll do another lightning payment and I'm going to send 500,000 sats this time. And this is the routing fees only going to be 54 sats. I'll click confirm and it has now been sent. I can go back to Phoenix and I will see that it has been received. And again, this time I was not cho charged an initial fee to open up the payment channel. I was just charged the on, on chain fee. Uh, that the uh, the Bitcoin miners charge. So now if we close this up, what we can do is we can go back and we can take a look at that payment channel and we can see now that I have 584,000 sats on my side. There's still just that 8,000 sats on the inbound liquidity side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna send this back to Strike and what's that, what that's gonna do is it's gonna affect the payment channel in a way that I'm gonna show you right now. So what I wanna do is I first wanna go back to Strike I want to generate a receive address. I'll click a lightning wallet. I'm going to copy the, uh, the code here, the QR code, and then I'm going to click send. I'm going to say don't allow to use the camera, but I'm going to paste from the clipboard. I'll paste and I'm going to send, uh, call it 500,000 sats back. We can see here that this is the fee that async charges. They're going to charge me a lightning fee of 0.4%, which is 2,000 sats, about 80 cents. And so they'll be sending 500,000 sats and they'll also be debiting 2,004 sats in order to do this. So now I'm gonna click pay, it is sent, and then I can go back over to strike and I just received uh, the 500,000 sats back. Now the reason I did this was to increase the size of my Phoenix payment channel. So let's go take another look at the payment channel. And again, we've received two payments, we've sent out a payment, but what's interesting to see is how this has affected the payment channel. So now I only have 82,000, 83,000 sats on my side of the payment channel, but inbound liquidity, I have 500,000 sats, 510,000 sats here that I can receive. So I can receive approximately $200 worth of payments into this wallet and not be charged a uh, a real fee this time. So let's receive 100,000 sats and see what, uh, what I'm charged. So we'll do receive, we will click copy, we will go back to strike, we're gonna send, we're gonna send 100,000 sats over. This is an old message. I'm going to send uh, 100,000 sats over to Phoenix, click OK, and now we will go back to Phoenix. So we just received 100,000 sats, and this time there were no fees, there were no mining fees to receive 
this payment because the channel already had enough liquidity. If we take a look at this payment channel once more, we can see that what happened is just some of, some of the liquidity that was on the right side got pushed over to my side. So this was an example where there was no fee required because there was no there was no uh, minor fee that needed to be paid for an on-chain transaction. So this is one way to fund your Phoenix wallet initially. You can send over money using the Lightning Network. You'll just click receive and you can receive it from the Lightning Network. Another way of doing it is to receive on-chain Bitcoin. So we can see here this is a Lightning invoice, but if we just toggle to the right, it'll provide a Bitcoin address that we can use. And if you send Bitcoin to this Bitcoin address, you will be charged a mining fee because it's a real transaction that goes to the Bitcoin miner. But this money, this Bitcoin will end up in your Lightning wallet. It'll first go to this Bitcoin address and then it'll be swapped out for Lightning Bitcoin by Async by Phoenix. So that's another way to receive. When you first open up your wallet, you can receive by, you can fund your, your wallet using Lightning. You can also fund it using an on-chain transaction and you can use it you can actually send out using an on-chain transaction as well if you send out using an on-chain on -chain transaction though it will shrink your payment channel i want to conclude this video by talking about another way to add liquidity to your payment channel so the way we did it is we sent sats over from strike and then we sent them back to strike and that helped to fund and enlarge our payment channel. There's another way of doing it, and there's a way of doing it where you can sort of hedge against future minor transaction fees. So I can click right here, add liquidity, and this will give me the option of creating future liquidity for a year. So let's say, for example, I'm gonna be using this as a business wallet, and I'm gonna be receiving larger amounts of money. So let's say I'm gonna be receiving, I think we can go all the way to the top here. Let's say I'm gonna be receiving 10,000 sats. I expect to receive, uh, I'm sorry, 10 million sats, which is about $4,000 over the coming year. So what I can do, rather than just sending in, let's say I don't have 10 million sats, but I expect to earn it, rather than just sending that in from my strike wallet or another lightning wallet or sending it in on chain, because in order to do that, I need to have $4,000 worth of Bitcoin. Instead, I can add liquidity to the other side of my payment channel by using Async as a Lightning service provider, and they will give me liquidity. So what I can do, I can decide how much liquidity I want on the right side of that channel. I can click Estimate Liquidity Cost, and we can see here that this will charge me, uh, the, I'll first have to pay a transaction fee to the miner of about 18, 19,000 sats. There'll be a service fee of 100,000 sats for that's payable to async and then this will provide me with this sort of in, inbound liquidity for one year and when you add up all the minor fees this is actually not a huge amount because i'll be able to keep receiving that inbound uh inbound liquidity now you obviously don't have to do that much you can start off with a smaller amount you could start off with let's say you just want to have a hundred thousand dollars a hundred thousand sats worth of inbound liquidity about forty dollars worth and you don't currently have any money on lightning what i can do is i can estimate liquidity cost and i can see it just costs about four dollars and uh, 30 cents call it and this will also give me uh, liquidity inbound liquidity for a year then I, if i want to do this i'll just click accept but the, the easy way to do it if you already have sats or bitcoin is to just send some uh, bitcoin into your lightning wallet open up that ch payment channel when transaction fees are low at the base layer and you can just check mempool.space to see where transaction fees are so i'd encourage you to start very small with this this is a hot wallet like all Lightning wallets. As such, it's connected to the internet. It doesn't have the same security guarantees as holding Bitcoin on chain, but this is a lower transaction way of interacting with the Bitcoin network. So one way of doing this, if you don't have a lot of Bitcoin to start off with, you could buy Bitcoin on an exchange or earn it. You could allow it to accumulate in a wallet like the Phoenix wallet. And then what you could do is you could send it on chain to a real Bitcoin address on chain maybe a hardware wallet generated address and that would be how you accumulate bitcoin using lightning and then when you have enough where it makes sense paying the fee so if the fee for example is twenty dollars to interact with the bit the base layer and you only have twenty twenty dollars worth of bitcoin it doesn't make that much sense but maybe when you have a thousand dollars or fifteen hundred dollars worth of bitcoin you'll make a lot more sense so you accumulate your sats on phoenix and then you swap them out to an on-chain address you send them into cold storage that way and if you're interested in me making a video about how to do that, 
I can uh, do that in the future. Just let me know in the, the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.